What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new Keychron Q1 Custom 75% Mechanical Keyboard that comes in at an extremely budget friendly price tag. So is this too good to be true? Uh, this is doing a lot of really great things for not only the keyboard community out there, but for those looking to get into custom keyboards as a hobby. So we're going to go through it all for you guys today. Like I said, is it too good to be true? We'll go through the pros, cons, my thoughts and opinions, all that stuff in case you're trying to pick up the new Keychron Q1. So Keychron's entering the 75% market here with a more enthusiast approach versus their other releases in the past. And naturally, this is going to draw comparisons to the GMMK Pro. Checking it out inside the box, nothing too fancy, a pretty standard unboxing experience. We'll skip this for now and talk about what we get inside the box in a second. But yes, first impressions are that it's solid. It feels nice with it being all aluminum, looks nice. I'm digging the color scheme for the keycaps. Got a custom badge on the top right. A little bit of marinara on my left thumb. But there is admittedly more going on than what first meets the eye. Circling back to what we get included for us, we have a key switch puller for the hotspot PCB, a keycap puller, extra gasket strips and extra screws. And I was missing two hex keys for our screws. Maybe it's just because I have an early unit, but yeah. We also get the user manual and a nice startup guide. Keychron also gives us a nice stock coil cable with an aviator connector in the middle. Definitely one of the nicer stock cables on the market. And since the Q1 is both Mac and PC compatible, they include a set of eight extra keycaps with appropriate OS modifiers and a few extra keys as well. And they do that because on the back left side is a dedicated Mac and PC switcher, which lets you toggle between the different preset layers for that OS. So you can control the like, screen brightness, for example, if you're on your Mac. Then right next to that is our USB-C port for the cable. But now let's see what the Q1 has going on inside. Removing the keycaps reveal their phantom switches. We'll talk about these in a minute. Underneath is the 83 key hot swap PCB. Then flipping over to get inside are eight total screws. Removing these just takes a few seconds, obviously, but they're the only thing holding the top and bottom of the frame together. Because like I said before, the Q1 is gasket mount, so there's no actual screws holding the actual PCB to the frame, with a slight exception. There are then six additional screws holding the plate and the PCB together. That's if you want to swap plates. We're not going to be doing that today because we just have their stock aluminum plate included for us. But there are then two screws holding the USB-C daughter board to the top frame. It's connected by one of those standard ribbon cables. And it's just easier to unscrew the board itself instead. Then once that's out, you now have the pleasure of watching me put the frame back on as I flip it over instead of just taking it out then. Unnecessary steps, Frank. I guess it makes it more pleasing for the presentation. I don't know what I was thinking. Been off lately. We've all had those days. All right, so one of the main differences between this Q1 and the GMMK Pro is the fact that this is a gasket mount board. Not only do we have a layer of foam between the plate and the PCB, but you'll see four tiny foam strips on the top and bottom corners. There's four on the top plate and four on the bottom. This is what gets sandwiched between the top and the bottom of the frame. Those foam strips compress and gives your typing experience a nice and flexible feel. And like I said, this is different versus a plate mount keyboard where the PCB is actually screwed to the bottom of the housing. Keychron said with their foam gaskets, this gives you 2.5 millimeters of flexibility. And just to show you real quick, if you're not familiar or you've never used this type of mount on a keyboard before, it's not like cheap or creaky, you know? Your first reaction to probably seeing this flex might be that it is cheap because of the visual movements, but it's soft, it's gradual. When you're typing or gaming, you know, it's up to you how much force you apply, you know? So if you touch type, for example, there's not gonna be that much flex, but the fact that we do have 2.5 millimeters of flexibility just gives you that really nice soft typing experience. Now you may have spotted earlier when I was taking the board apart, inside the bottom housing is a very, very thin layer of foam. And this sits under the PCB. It is glued down, so you're going to have to rip it out if you want to remove it. But this is included stock for you. And it kind of helps cut down on the resonance, since like I said, the frame is aluminum, so you are more prone to that more, you know, echoey metallic sound. Last physical feature before we move on, as you see in the top right is the badge. This one has my logo and was custom done by Keychron, but the badge can be removed and there's a standard switch socket underneath. So if you want an extra key there, you can do so. But they did also say coming out for just $10 more is gonna be the option to have a rotary knob encoder. And having this knob is great for volume adjustment on the fly. And it really is like a standout physical and visual feature on the GMMK Pro. But it is good to know that if you don't need it on your Q1 or you have, you know, really just no use for it overall, you could still buy it without it, which is nice. Another thing of the option of that checkout is your switch type with Keychron selection of Gateron Phantom Reds, Browns, and Phantom Blue switches. In our unit are the Gateron Phantom Reds. They're factory lubed and nice and linear, but with our PCB, it's a south facing five pin board. Meaning with the five pins, you can use pretty much any switch offering you please. 
And south facing is also great for different keycap compatibility. And the RGB LED in the bottom will shine up to the switch cutout. Now I will say one of the factors with this keyboard not having shine through keycaps and colored housing for their switches is the fact that you're really not gonna even notice the RGB like at all. And with those colored housings, it's gonna give the LED a slight tint in whatever color your switch is. But say you have different colored effects going on where the static color is like yellow or green, I don't know. It's gonna be slightly diffused in the color of your switch housing. So it's gonna have like a little red tint to it or brown or blue. Again, it's really not a big deal because you're barely gonna notice the LEDs anyways. I literally filmed like 95% of this review without the RGB lights even on, and I didn't even notice, I had no idea. You're only gonna notice the lights are on if you're looking at it from like a real drastic angle on the side, or where the bottom of the switch is noticeable. And from a top-down view, as you can see, there's no light bleed at all. Uh, the black aluminum plate doesn't really help reflect the lights either. So if you're an RGB lover and you're not using shine through keycaps, you might be disappointed. I usually keep it like a static white anyways, but yeah, you can't tell at all. So in addition to our switches being lubed, so are our stabilizers. These are Gateron screw-ins. Said you can also pick up like Duroc stabilizers and they'll fit in here as well. But yes, the stock ones on here are factory lubed and generously lubed at that. All right, so now we're gonna do a sound test, but listen up real quick. We're gonna do three different versions, okay? First up is gonna be a sound test of the three switch options with the phantom reds, browns, and blues. Then we're gonna go into the actual, you know, full sound test with the Gateron reds like I have in my unit. And then we're gonna do a slight switch comparison with the Gateron reds in my Q1 versus how it sounds in the GMMK Pro. Again, both using the phantom reds. You can hear a difference of each sound profile in each board. So three different sort of sound tests for you guys. Sit tight, listen up, put on headphones. We'll talk about this in a second, don't worry, but for the Phantom Reds in the Q1, as you heard, yes, it does sound a bit hollow and using everyone's new favorite buzzword, pingy. But not pingy in the sense where, in the usual sound test, if you hear a pinging resonance, most likely it's due to the switches. But this case, with the, with the lubed Phantom Reds, it's not the switches, it's the board itself all aluminum, and since we have that very, you know, highly flexible gasket mount here with 2.5 millimeters of flexibility, uh, you saw that very thin layer of foam underneath. So there's still a decent amount of room for the tray to move up and down. Like I said, 2.5 millimeters. So that's why it does have that more hollowy, pingy sound. You can remedy that if you want. You can add more foam. You're gonna lose a bit of flexibility with the gasket mount. And they did say they're actually going to include an additional layer of foam inside the box. Uh, but like I said, with this being a pre-production unit, I didn't get that either, but it is an option. So you can sort of absorb more of that ping and hollow sound, but you will lose out on that added extra uh, flexibility. You're probably gonna have closer to a millimeter versus 2.5 millimeters if you do put in more foam. And as I just compared it to with the GMMK Pro, again, the Phantom Red switches in here, this probably sound better to you. 
because again, this is more of a solid chassis. Uh, the gasket mount in this board, like I corrected on screen before, it's technically gasket mount, yes, but there is zero flex or give to this board. It's why a lot of people knocked it, and it's known sort of to deaden your key switch. You know, it does. It takes away a lot of the characteristics a lot of key switches out there. So this sounds better in that sense where it's not as hollow, but there is zero flex to this. So it's admittedly gonna be a trade-off. Do you want more flex in your keyboard? Uh, if so, you're gonna have a bit more of that hollow sound, but you can mod it, you can do more things to it to take away that sound, but still have a bit more flex. So it's all up to you. It's all it comes down to preference. That's what the entire keyboard community is about, preference. And I'm telling you guys, it's not the actual key switches contributing to that ping, it's the keyboard. You can hear just the echo and that metallic ringing sound it has due to it being so hollow on the inside. The phantom red switches, the stabilizers here, factory lubed, all sound and feel very, very good if it wasn't for that natural pinging we have here. So using this for whatever, gaming, productivity, doesn't matter what you use a keyboard for, all that matters is that it works up to your expectations, right? And with this keyboard, I have had no issues. I did have some weird issues with the software, but software is boring. We'll talk about that as we wrap this up. But yes, in terms of its actual performance of the keyboard, all good stuff, all good stuff. I don't have any physical numbers of like input lag or latency on that front, uh, but I will say, People love freaking out about the GMMK Pro being at around 25 milliseconds of input lag. They say it's unusable for gaming, which is just not true because what everybody likes to ignore is the fact that the Ducky 1 2 Mini also has around 25% milliseconds of input lag and no one complains about that. Millions of people use it and no one says it's unusable for gaming. So I don't know where that came from. Um, I've never noticed or had a keyboard like that affect me. I've been using the Jim McKay Pro since release and I've never once been like, ah, oh, I can't win this match because of my keyboard. No, it's a lazy excuse. It's not true. And I don't know, like I said, the actual input lag latency numbers for the Q1, uh, but it feels just fine to me. It feels like all my other keyboards that I've used. So no issues on that end. It's thundering. Now, the big thing about the Q1 that could pretty much make you overlook any physical flaw that you may have or thing you don't like about it kind of just vanish and go away, is the price point, okay? The Q1 fully built out is 170, and that is insane. For reference, again, since it's naturally compared to GMMK Pro, this was 170, bare bones, meaning you still needed to buy switches and keycaps, okay? You're looking at around 250 minimum to get this thing up and running versus 170, everything included for you, already built. That leaves you a lot of room to, you know, like I said before, extra modifications if you want. Pick up a different coiled cable. It does come with the, the beautiful one, but if you wanna get a different color, sure, you can. 170 for this is crazy. Crazy, crazy good. Crazy good. I could say it 10 more times. And you look at the price breakdown, they give you a lot of options on their website to configure it even more. So you'll see here for today's pre-orders that just got released, 170 for fully assembled, but you can also get it bare bones. If you, you know, have your own switches and keycaps that you wanna use, you can save some money, save 20 bucks. But you can see here, the Q1 comes in black, which we have a navy and a space gray. So they're also gonna have different colors later on down the line. And literally like 10 minutes ago, they sent me their navy unit, which as you can see in the, you know, in more direct lighting, it is more of like a royal blue, I'd say. But again, I like the numerous colors options we're getting. But when you scroll down to customize the Q1, it unlocks a lot of extra customization, <laughs> naturally. So like I have my custom Random Frank P badge, you too can have your own badge for just an extra 30 bucks, which really isn't bad. You can upload your own graphic and use it on your keyboard. If you wanna get a second set of their phantom switches, so if you wanna try out like their the tactile or clickies or whatever, uh, they are 15 bucks for one. You are gonna need three packs, so that's 45 bucks. But again, that's very fairly priced for factory loop switches that are insanely lubed. They have other Gateron switches you can pick from and add to your cart if you choose. Cherry, Kale, all that stuff. So tons of options. And then also different colored keycaps. A lot of different colored keycaps. A bit sus on some of the colors. You know, we're gonna start to get into that whole uh, clone discussion, but that's a story for a different day. And keycaps are an extra 40 bucks. 
guess what? How about plates? Yes, we only have their stock aluminum plate in our keyboard, but they're also gonna give you the option to pick up a brass plate or a polycarbonate plate. And honestly, given all the customization they allow and how budget friendly at 170 this is for a fully pre-built custom keyboard like this, that is enough to just mentally dismiss any cons or negativity you may have about this keyboard because now you have so much room to still customize it and modify it to your liking. Um, if you do want to, you know, point out some things, yeah, the RGB on here isn't impressive. Like I said, yeah, kind of hollowy. All things that could easily be overlooked for that price. And um, it's really, really remarkable what they're doing here so soon. What? This came out in March, the GMMK Pro. And just the fact that this is 170 bare bones, they're giving you 170 fully built up. And, uh, you know, the choice is yours. Do you want a rotary knob? Extra 10 bucks. You want different plates? Sure. Bunch of different keycaps? Sure. This is good. Competition is always a good thing for the consumer and the custom keyboard market as a whole. I think we're going to start to see the prices naturally going to have to start to go down from other companies and manufacturers out there because 170 pre built. That's all I have to say. 170 pre built. I don't even want to talk about it right now, but it is VIA and QMK compatible for software. You can go in and customize it. Software is boring. Showing you real quick in VIA, if you want to you know, configure it, uh, reprogram keys, create macros, you can do so. Layers zero and one are saved to the Mac preset, since you have the switcher on the back, like I said. So zero and one is for Mac. Layers two and three then are for your PC presets. QMK and VIA compatible for software. So this review has gone on far too long at this point. I start rambling, time starts ticking. All you need to know, is 170 for a fully pre-built keyboard with tons of potential and customization. Yes, it's worth it. Yes, Keychron's doing some great, great stuff. That'll wrap it up. If you guys want to check it out, I'll have a link for you in the description down below. If you like this review, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.